Hey, everybody. It's a Monday afternoon and glad to have everybody along. Before we get started, let me talk to you about a few of our sponsors. I'll start with this. This is super important for those of you that love Tory Holistics, and apparently all of you do, because let me tell you, Tory Holistics loves the great friends. Ruthie, who runs the marketing, loves the great friends because you guys are coming into the shop. You're using our promo codes. Sometimes you're asking for Ruthie and saying hello because you've seen her on the show. Awesome. You save 20%, but listen carefully because our promo code is now Kiva, K-I-V-A. We change the promo codes a lot so that they can keep in touch with how we're doing. Brand new promo code. You'll save 20% when you use it. It's called Kiva, K-I-V-A. That is our promo code. Now, listen, while you're at Toriolistics, check out our people from Hel Hellman Valley Growers Company, HVGC. These guys are right over my shoulder here. Um, quick story for you. I've told this story before, but you know, my friend, Brendan Ozan is the president of Hellman Valley Growers Company. I didn't even know. He was my lawyer years ago. I mean, I can't even tell you the stuff that this guy has gotten me into and out of um, as my attorney, business attorney. He owns this company with all these former Marines. He's really the financier behind it all. This weekend, he gave this to me. Hellman Valley Growers Company, and this is their new, um, it's called Sunday Driver, and it's live resin. And I didn't know this, but um, apparently live resin is the new big thing in vape cartridges. And I said to them, um, hey, give me like, what, what's the strongest you got? And they said, well, live resin is actually stronger. So now the guys from Hellman Valley Growers Company have gone in and they've started doing live resin. And my friend Brendan yesterday gave me these cartridges. He said, here, try them out. Tell me what you think. So, so far, awesome. It's called Sunday Driver. I love the packaging, the red, white, and blue. Hellman Valley Growers Company, former Marines. And by the way, they say it right here on the box now, 100% of the profits fund medical cannabis research. Check out that cool box. That's really, really cool. I mean, these are former Marines, a little red, white, and blue action there. Save 20% by using our promo code Kiva at Toriolistics, K-I-V-A, and get yourself some of this Hellman Valley Growers Company. Um, two others. I just want to mention these traditional radio sponsors. Here goes. One, Total Tea Clinic. Listen, on Friday of last week, I stopped into the Total Tea Clinic. I go in and um, the nurse who's helping me said to me, she goes, oh my God, I can't tell you how many guys come in here and mention you and the show. And I said, well, that's awesome. She goes, but recently, like within the last month or two, everybody coming in is mentioning Kaplan and crew, mentioning the show. And she was like really surprised by that. I'm not surprised by it. We got a bunch of dudes in this audience. Okay. They hear what I'm talking about. Do you feel slow, tired, weak, sluggish? Are you not getting it done in the bedroom? Are you not motivated the way you used to be? Well, if that's you, you need to go to the Total T Clinic. You get older, your testosterone levels go down. You don't even realize it. And then all of a sudden you get on to testosterone and you're like, oh my God, I feel the way I used to feel. Total T Clinic, TotalTClinic.com. Get your testosterone levels checked. 15 minutes, you're in and out. Total T Clinic, TotalTClinic.com. Okay, and then lastly, Oh man, what can I tell you about Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services? This market for real estate continues to go absolutely nuts. This past weekend, I was with uh, Linda Welby and her husband, Austin, and Austin is in a somewhat similar business. And dude, all we talked about was real estate. What's happening? Why are the prices so high? Why are the rates so low? How long is this going to last? You need answers. Gary Cooper, Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services, 858-376-1299, 858-376-1299. Alex, before we start, have, when's your meeting with Gary? Is it today, later, today. earlier? Later today. Later today. Later today. I'll meet with Gary. Spoke with him all over the weekend. All mm -hmm. documents, applications are in, and now we meet with him later today. Isn't it amazing that you're talking to him all weekend long? Not like, hey, I'll talk to you on Monday. Oh, and I actually apologize because... Um, I was texting him Sunday night at about 8.45 p.m. Mm -hmm. And he was still texting me back quick. Dude, that's the way he is, man. He treats everybody that way. Gary Cooper, Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services, 858-376-1299. If you're like Alex and you've decided, let's get into home ownership now, okay? There is a plan for you. There's a mortgage for you. And Gary's the guy to get it done. 858-376-1299. Thanks to all of our great sponsors. Let's get started on a Monday.
Hey, great friends. What's up? It is a Monday afternoon and we are just getting back onto the airwaves. If you are with us on 1090, because forever you were like, dude, need to get you back on the radio. Want to be able to get in my car, turn on the radio. Super simple. Don't make it complicated for me. Don't make me use my phone, plug it in, go to YouTube. Just please get back on the radio. 1090 listeners, we're back on the air. In fact, I ran into a guy on Friday night and he said, dude, I miss you so much. I can't believe it, man. I miss you guys. And I'm like, brother, we are back on the radio. And he says, no way. Since when? And I said, since August, you know? And he's like, okay, I didn't know. I don't expect everybody knows that we're back on 1090. So listen, this is one of the main reasons why I always say to you, radio is a distribution platform. We're also on YouTube, video streaming. For everybody that's with us on YouTube, get involved in the YouTube chat. Come down below and leave a comment. Give a thumbs up. Subscribe. I mean, do all the things that we ask you to do because you're a great friend and you're helping build the great friends community. So listen, radio listeners, happy to have you. YouTube viewers and people in the YouTube chat, glad you're here. Facebookers, why are we still on Facebook? Because billions of people are on Facebook and you never know when somebody's going to share start a watch party, get people from Southern California and San Diego involved in the great friends community. And then all the audio podcast platforms, Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, TuneIn, and now Amazon Music. I didn't even know about Amazon Music until Alex told me last week. We're on there too. So for everybody listening on all the different platforms, for everybody engaging, whether it's on Twitter or Instagram at Kaplan and Crew, on Cited, if you're getting involved in any of our questions or debates or if we're going back and forth, it's great to be with everybody, no matter how you're taking in the show. Okay. As we come on the air Monday afternoon, I'd say the story of the day is shaping up to be J.J. Watt. I thought J.J. Watt was going to leave Houston and go to Pittsburgh to play with his brothers go to Green Bay because that's kind of going home because he played his college ball at Wisconsin. Adam Schefter ESPN this morning reported, and I guess J.J. Watt really reported it. He said, who's the source? Me. I'm the source. J.J. Watt put out a picture. We're looking at it right now for those of you that are with us on the video stream. He said, the source? Me. And he's wearing an Arizona Cardinals workout shirt, and he's squatting. He got the weights on his shoulders, and he's squatting. So as we come on today on a Monday, and I thought we would start off with the beginning of spring training, getting down to the wire in the college basketball season. I know there's still controversy out there about the dinner this past weekend that Alex and Browner were invited to, but decided they didn't want to show up. There's all this stuff that we wanted to get to, but J.J. Watt taking the lead today. And so we'll get to that as the afternoon goes on. Let me say good afternoon. Mi hermano numero uno, grande Alejandro Padilla, 805 representing. Oxnard, California's favorite son, Ventura County in La Casa. Grande rocking that San Diego State hoodie today, looking colorful, proud, Aztec for life. Hi, Alex. Hey, everybody. Scott, you're off the hook with the dinner thing. I'll explain later when we get to that story. Um, and Browner may disagree with what I'm about to say for that, for that particular dinner. I'm going to mm -hmm. let Scott off the hook. Uh, you also, though, failed to mention mm -hmm. the most one-sided fight that you missed on saturday because the dude canelo fought i could have put up more of a fight and i'm not even kidding like that gentleman whoever he is we'll never hear from him again probably was a human punching bag on saturday night <laughs> i don't know the the compu box numbers after but if he landed one i would be surprised like that was the most lopsided fight i've seen in so long and i'm so glad it only cost me 20 dollars. and i did get a jay balvin concert in on saturday so that was nice um, so you missed out on a Jay Balvin concert. I was going to come and try and talk like, oh, you missed the greatest fight, man. Canelo did this. this. No, you just missed the concert, the, the Jay Balvin concert. Who's That's Jay it. Balvin? He's a reggaeton, reggaeton artist. Uh, mm -hmm. I believe he's Colombian. Very famous. Not as famous as like Bad Bunny uh, is, but very similar. I think he was in the Super Bowl show with Shakira and J-Lo, if I remember where correctly, would, um, last year. Where, where was the concert? Well, he 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 performed before Canelo walked out. Oh, missed all that. <laughs> the Turkish guy mm. had this really boring entrance, 
Mm-hmm. And then Canelo had this like Apollo Creed style where like James Brown is singing him out in Rocky Four. Like, it was amazing. It was great. Mm-hmm. That's all you missed. So, so I didn't see the Canelo fight. I did wind up seeing all the highlights of the TKO. And tell me this, C- Canelo's still fighting on this app, the Zone, correct? Yeah. And as I recall, he did a deal with them that was like a 10 fight, $300 million deal. Does that sound about familiar? Yeah. Do you have any idea how many fights into this contract he is? I don't exactly. And the reason know. I ask, let me tell you the reason I ask. My thought would be this. If Canelo owes them 10 fights, maybe the reason he's fighting so much right now and maybe the reason he's fighting against guys that, I mean, he's just outclassing, maybe the reason he's doing that is to just get this contract over with. You know, I like maybe, he, yeah, like maybe he thinks, hey, the, the sooner I fulfill these 10 fights, the sooner I have leverage on the zone or I can go back to somebody else and they can pay me a lot more. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. So, I think that's possible. Be, because that, the thing is, is that these fights, you say they're not competitive. Well, who's he fighting? Nobody knows. You know, this isn't Triple G. This isn't Mayweather. This isn't something interesting. Maybe the best part of the fight was after the fight when that guy had the Jake Paul t-shirt and he was jumping up and down in the press conference. Yeah. And Canelo goes, hey, get the F out of here. Yeah. You little effer. Uh, Canelo, Canelo's got, Canelo has fought, if I am doing this correctly, he's fought five times under that contract. So he's got five more to go. And you said he's fighting a lot more often, right? Yeah. And they're literally, they had his, they knew he was going to win. It would be the the upset of the world if he lost. And they already have his next fight lined up against the WBO super middleweight champion, Billy Joe Saunders. And that's May 8th. Cinco de Mayo. Okay. Okay. So May 8th. So today's, today's March 1st, April, May, he's got two months. So Canelo can very happily come back to Del Mar, play golf with his team, or with his group of guys all week, you know, for the next two months. He just got a big payday. He can, he can give it all away on the golf course, and uh, and he can try and get this contract over with because mm-hmm. I just don't know how many people are seeing him fight on the zone. I really don't. All right, ladies and gentlemen, say good afternoon to a man who's six foot seven inches tall, twisted steel, sex appeal, big sacks, big max, hot take machine. The Brown Saw, bringing you the street cred from the podcast shed, an art connoisseur specializing in the work of Basquiat and a man who said this weekend, it's time as he was heading into Tory Holistics. By the way, our promo code has changed at Tory Holistics. Our new promo code at Tory Holistics is now Kiva, K-I-V-A. I'm mentioning this for all the radio listeners out there, because if you're listening to the podcast, you get this in the pre-roll. For those of you that are radio listeners, you may not have heard this. The new promo code at Tori Holistics is Kiva, K-I-V-A. You'll save 20% when you go there. And I ran into my buddy, Brendan Ozan, this past weekend, who runs Hellman Valley Growers Company, and he gave me one of their new live resin cartridges. Thus far, enjoying HVGC, Hellman Valley Growers Company. Hi, Brown. What's up, man? What's going on? How's everybody doing on this glorious first day of March Madness? Um, you know, some people never, never cease to amaze me. J.J. Watt never disappoints. He never disappoints me. Just when I think he can't get more self-centered. Bro, just do a regular picture, man. You got to be in the weight room. Really? Really? That's just a regular image of you just good old working out. Let it be, bro. Let it let it later rest. Okay? Do the normal I'm going to the Cardinals. Hell, make another video. Why does it always have to be this intense look at me? Captain football's back. Urgh. I don't even know what kind of workout he was doing. Maybe he was doing squats. I don't know. I don't really be doing them things. I got thin legs. But <laughs> I just <laughs> I, I I don't I don't get not it. Not working the leg, not working the legs, huh? Skinny. No, I'm working on that Miami body. You know, big up top, low on the bottom. Mm-hmm. Why are you so down on JJ Watt? Like, why you bust his balls all the time? You know, like like like. Let me ask you a question. Mm-hmm. Remember when Trevor Bauer signed with the Dodgers? Yes. Did you see how he announced that? Didn't even care. No, I didn't. Okay, but but so what? I mean, the point is, is that he he put out a YouTube video. He produced it. It was well edited, very well edited. Um, He produced something. This is the way guys are now. They all want to control their own message. Fair. 
people don't want to give it to a, a media outlet that's not their own. So they put it out on their own Twitter, their own Facebook, Instagram, whatever, something they think they control, even though they they really don't. But that's another story for another day. Why are you so down on JJ? Can White? I ask a question too? And I, I'm not getting, I'm not doing the Scott, he's black, he's white thing. I have a genuine question. Why do we praise Cam Newton every single week when that's the most self-serving, like, look at me, look at me, post-game outfit thing? Like, that's okay, but one picture of him squatting is not okay? Because you just said it. Because because Browner doesn't like J.J. Watt. He's got a built-in bias against him. Built in. So, oh, It was no, a question. And- it was a question, and I'm not accusing. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Me neither, me neither. Yeah. I'll Sorry, now, Brown. I'll now fairly answer the question that was posed to me. <laughs> Thank mm-hmm. you. Cam Newton's fashion is a whole nother level of why we need pictures of Cam Newton. What was so fashionable about J.J. Watt in a Cardinals t-shirt? Nothing. Um, the, 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 no, no, the beanie. The beanie was kind of fashionable. Well, I, I, do, I do appreciate a solid baseball tee. I think those need to come back uh, because baseball tees are legit. So, I. Okay. What is your problem? Come on. Let's have the answer. <laughs> what is your problem with J.J. Watt? Like, like my biggest question really is not about his picture and his announcement. My bigger question is, why is he going to the Arizona Cardinals? I'm trying to figure that out. I thought maybe we could all look at the depth chart and try and figure it out. And then I was thinking about the division. Okay, Seattle, the Rams. Okay, the Cardinals maybe you think are the up-and-comers in the division, the 49ers. Like, like why did he choose Arizona? You know, to me, guys go play for the Arizona Cardinals when they're at the end of their career and they want to retire in Arizona. And they go, you know what? It's hot, nice weather, dry this is home base for me. This is where I train in the off season. Like to me, I look at the Cardinals as a retirement home, not as a real Super Bowl contender. So why is he signing there? All right, Browner. Kyler Murray. No, no, but, but it's not that they, they have a nice young quarterback, right? But they haven't elevated yet to a playoff contender or a championship contender. So maybe JJ, JJ Watt thinks the next two years, they are a championship contender and he can add to it. But um, all right, Browner. So what's your problem with JJ Watt? I can tell you why he chose Arizona. Because in Arizona, it'll be about J.J. Watt. If J.J. Watt would have went to Pittsburgh, it would have probably been about the Watt brothers and Ben Roethlisberger or 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 Mike Tomlin. If he'd have gone to, to Cleveland, it'd have been about Miles Garrett or it'd have been about Baker Mayfield. If he'd have gone to, what was another, to Green Bay, it definitely would have been about Aaron Rodgers. What so, if he would have gone well, to let the me Chargers? Tell you. Well, here's, remember you said he, you said he was going to go to the Chargers. What if he would have gone to the Chargers? Who would it have been about then? It would have been about Herbert. Herbo. Period. Point blank. End of story. You guys are forget. You guys are, are you, Scott. To answer your question, there is thirty-one million reasons why JJ Watt went to the Cardinals. See, I don't think it was about that's the money. What, hell yeah, it was about the money. He could have got that money from multiple places. Nope. 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 Really? I think he ran. He the Texans cut him because he was going to make 19 million last year. He's going to make 3.5 million less this year. No other team was going to offer JJ Watt 15.5 million, 23 guaranteed. Not a chance. Well, the reports were there was a team out there offering him 15 million. Now we know who and now the we team know who was. it was. Yeah. So, I think- well, but that that is interesting because that was exactly what we talked about when he was let go. Mm-hmm. Right? Is it's like okay? Because remember the first part of the story was. Why is it that J.J. Watt is allowed to leave Houston and Deshaun Watson is being forced to stay there? And there's an obvious answer to all of that, which is twofold. One, Deshaun Watson is in the prime of his career, and you hate to give up uh, a quarterback Quarterback. at this time of his career. Although, I don't know if you guys saw this weekend, there was a headline in Houston, in the Houston front page of their newspaper. I don't read the San Diego paper, but I did see it on Twitter. I saw this. Yeah, it was like, time to make a deal. And, and what the Houston, I don't know if it's the Chronicle or whatever newspaper it was, what they were saying is, look, the kid has told you he doesn't want to play here. The kid has told the new coach he doesn't want to play here. So the question you have to ask yourself as the Houston Texans is, do we want to get something for Deshaun Watson or do we want to have him sit out and not play? The point is, is that you feel like J.J. Watt is broken down and no longer worth, call it $19 million a year. And so when he leaves... I said from the beginning, no one's going to pay him anywhere near that kind of money. That's why you let him go mm-hmm. versus hold on to a quarterback under contract. $31 you still million, gotten, dude. You still haven't gotten to why, though. Like, why his, his, today, this his picture, 
I think yeah, his I, announcement. Why is it such a big problem? Why I do think you hate him? JJ Watt was more valuable to the Houston Texans than he would have been to any other team in the NFL, period. On and off the field because the equity that he had built up within that community and and the pillar he had become for that organization. You have a new coach coming in who is the old, probably, I think the oldest coach ever hired for a first time head coach. Shout out to Nick Fangio. You finally beat somebody at something. Who? So, Exactly. So I, I don't I don't understand why this move. OK, so, so now you're going to the Cardinals who with your addition, you can compete in the division. But depending on what the 49ers do and if Russell stays, you still might be the third best team in the division. About the okay, Rams. So, therefore, so what are you saying? Well, he's I, the Rams. He's the he's probably on the fourth best team in the division. So this was basically a move about money. If yes. it was if it was about the 15 million, because I never thought it was about money. This guy's made tons of money, tons of money. So the fact that we're even talking about the financial number on this leads me to believe that this is about JJ Watt. This isn't about winning. This isn't about success. This is about image. So and what does that picture show you? The image of JJ Watt is Mr. Weight Room, Mr. Lift, Captain America, which I'm cool with. I'm no, you're not. Own no, it, you're bro. Clearly, own you're, it. you're clearly not. You're clearly own not it. cool with it. But what's he not owning? Own it. Why didn't you just just say what you feel? And it's okay, man. Also, you think I you won't? If I if that's how I felt, you think I wouldn't say you, that? You don't like him because he's white, and that's that just ain't it. why. That ain't yeah, why. It yeah, it is. But it's okay. My, I think I just think you send mixed messages, dude. That's where no. I think what's because mixed? Deshaun Watson is doing a move for him. He already got paid. It's not about the money. Deshaun Watson, same team, wants out for him. Like JJ Watt made the move for him. Well, I mean, that's what players do. I don't understand why you're so upset about it. Listen, again, I'm not upset about JJ Watt leaving the team. Okay. I'm well, not about were, though. I'm not about JJ. No, I was upset the way that he was let go. Yes, right. absolutely. I felt like it was unfair. I understand why people say it's okay to have released him free of charge, but to keep hold of Deshaun Watson. I get that. I understand that from a football perspective, but from a logistics perspective. Why would you let a guy who arguably is more valuable to your franchise than Jay, than Deshaun Watson just walk away? Because he's not more valuable anymore. He he's he's a he's a guy who, if you look at his career, mm -hmm. the first half of it highly highly productive. Yes, and the back end of it has been marred mostly by injuries. When you think about and that franchise, who do you think about? When you think of the Houston Texans, who do you think of? Well, I'd say for the last six, seven, eight years, I've thought about JJ Watt. Right. But hold on a second. But oh. hold on. But going, but going forward, going forward, he's no longer the player he once was, and they have a young superstar quarterback. So I think of Deshaun Watson. I used to think of the Seattle Seahawks as the Legion of Boom on defense. Now I think of them as Russell Wilson. You know, I mean, I I just listen. Here's all I'm saying. I'm with Alex on this one. JJ Watt took the money. Because I'm trying to figure out if you're trying to chase a Super Bowl, where should you go? Do you, you look in the in the NFC West? You've got the Rams, the Seahawks, San Francisco, who was in the Super Bowl two years ago and was injury depleted all season this past year, and then Arizona. Just organizationally, of those four, do you do you think that that Arizona gives you the best chance of winning a Super Bowl in the latter part of your career? It could be like, how close was he to DeAndre Hopkins? You know, DeAndre Hopkins already put an Instagram saying reunited and it feels so good. Did DeAndre Hopkins sell him? I'm like, this is the place. We're up and coming. We're legit. As soon as we get this defense locked in, we're going to be a playoff team because they were one game away from being a playoff team last year. Let's not forget. So like Kyler Murray is and will be a great quarterback in the NFL already. He's, in his, he's going into his third year. DeAndre Hopkins is premier top wide receiver. Kenyon Drake went healthy. Good. Chandler Jones went healthy, also very good. His that'll be on the other side. When was JJ his most successful? When Which he had Clowney. When he had Clowney on the other side. So if it's Chandler and JJ, I can see a football reason why, but I know the money a big reason. Why. Well, yeah, I, I mean, you get it. to the end of your you get to the end of your career, you know, and you've accomplished so much, and you've become a big celebrity, and you've made a lot of money. 
like in the last couple of years, like you're looking at this and you're going, this is probably my last serious contract, my, yep. my last multi-year guaranteed money kind of contract. If I'm able to possibly play beyond, maybe I'll get a one-year deal or something like that. I'll just be a hired gun somewhere. But I just thought the whole story of JJ was fun. Like the whole weekend, everyone, he's posting stuff with him working out his brother. People are trying to decipher where he's going to go. His whole stupid thing about his Peloton bio is like Green Bay, Cleveland, or Buffalo. Like it was just a whole story. And I thought it was a great way to end it when he was like, you know what? Source me. Like JJ had nothing to do with all the, 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 uh -huh. the, 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 the theories out there of what all was right, happening me, with him. Let me throw this at you then. You ready? If, if Browner hates what JJ Watt has done, which, by the way, is just take control of his own announcement. Mm -hmm. He must be disgusted at what we saw this past weekend on video from Drew Brees. Hold on a second, everybody. Let me talk about that for a quick minute. This is not where I anticipated we were going to start. That's the beauty of the show. Stick around. We're just getting going. If you're a 1090 radio listener, stay right where you are. If you are a YouTuber and a viewer, hang out. I got to talk about Drew Brees. Let me, is he, is Drew Brees retiring? Let me talk about that. Monday afternoon, as we start the month of March, what's the deal with leap years? Like I see some Every four people, years. no, no, I got that part of it, but like, if, <laughs> you're, yeah, if you're born on February 29th, oh, and dude. there is no February 29th, what happens? Yeah. So I, you, Perfect timing. I have a friend who's born February 29th, and she had a, a real birthday last year because there was a February 29th last year, which was a leap year. So I asked, like, what what do you do? You're just like, well, you either celebrate on the 28th or the 1st. And the way I kind of noticed on her Instagram was that her sisters, like, sang her happy birthday at midnight of February 28th. So they kind of did the the right in the middle thing of where it would, it would be. And so we had this like birthday thing at the park on Saturday, but it wasn't her birthday because she doesn't have a birthday, but that's just kind of like you either celebrate the 28th or the first. That's it. I had three birthdays this past weekend, three birthdays. First one, Saturday morning, seven fifteen AM golf game with the legendary Jim Cahill. Um, you guys have met Jim before, whether you know it or not. He would always come to the, the track when we would set up during the summer at Del Mar. And you guys have met Jim Cahill. Um, great guy. We played golf. We had it on our calendar for weeks. We played golf Saturday morning. And I said, we were just talking about how old are your kids? How old are your kids? And we've known each other for years. We were just catching up. And he said, um, and I said, well, how old are you? And he said, 66 today. Turned 66. on." I go, today's your birthday? I didn't even know. <laughs> you know, and I was so flattered to be invited to play golf on my man's birthday. Sunday had a birthday bike ride. Do you guys remember a year ago when my friend Dave got into a terrible wreck was on that his a year bike? ago already? That was a year, a year ago? ago. A year ago. It was my friend JJ. It was his birthday a year ago. My friend Dave got into a terrible uh, bike accident. Thank God a year later, he's healthy and good and back to work and life is good. But man, it was touch and go for quite a while. So Sending out love to my man, Dave Vigil, a year later, and sending out love to my man, JJ, Jeff Jacobs, who we celebrated his birthday this weekend with a ride. It's pretty much the first time we've all ridden together in a year because of the pandemic and because of the, the accident. How far? How ago. long? Uh, it was supposed to coincide with his number of years, 55 miles. Um, but since I can't keep up with these guys, it turned into about a 30-mile bike ride for me. But you're on the Peloton, bro. What you mean? Dude, I am so fat and gross. You have no idea. What's your Peloton and, bio and, say? Well, Peloton. What you mean? That's you what know, you I got to learn for. I got to learn a lot more about how to use the Peloton. Pedal. But, but no, no, I know how to pedal, Jack. <laughs> Leap here every four years. How do you like pedal? Come on, bro. So, so, I, so I, I celebrated Jim Cahill's birthday on Saturday. My man Jeff Jacobs' birthday Sunday morning. My buddy Cal on Sunday night had a birthday. Guys, I've never done this before. Have you guys ever done axe throwing? Yeah. Not no. Oh my God. I don't know why. It is so much fun. Harder than so it looks. Oh no, dude. I'm I'm already like it took me three throws and I already had a bullseye. Dude. And then before you knew it, Alex, I was showing off, man. Not only was I throwing bullseyes with my right, I started throwing bullseyes with my left. And then Alex, you'll love this. Then I started really showing off. Double. Two hands. Thump, and I was just crushing. 
And the guy who was working there was like, hey, 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 don't do that with two two axes, man. I'm like, dude, watch this. Thump. <laughs> and I was just, well, dude, I loved it. Did you go to the one loved next to Wild Barrel? I went to the one in uh, Oceanside. Okay. Yeah, where's there was the one that you know? Well, uh, there's well, there's one in North Park. Yeah, right, right by my house. Uh, but there's dude, one right next to Wild Barrel too. Dude, it's amazing what people do in in business. Seriously, like who? Like wait, you own a an axe throwing retail location in a pandemic? That's unbelievable. It's a lot more sanitary than bowling and sticking your fingers in some god knows whose balls. So I know. And I never even thought about it. I grabbed the shaft of the axe, you know, mm -hmm. since you were talking about sticking fingers, fingers and balls. And balls. I, I grabbed the shaft of the axe. Mm -hmm. I never even thought about it. I mean, they had sanitizer and everything, but whatever. All right. Um, let me just say this to everybody who's listening. Happy birthday to every single one of Scott's friends. Happy birthday, <laughs> Cahill. Happy birthday, JJ. Happy birthday, Cal. And happy to celebrate with everybody this past weekend as I'm just about sure the world has decided we're back to it. Like after this past weekend, I went down to Ocean Beach and had dinner with Linda, her husband, Austin, with Bert, his fiance, Tanya, and with my girlfriend, Rachel. You guys were invited. You chose not to show up. Um, mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. OB packed like it's freaking New Year's Eve in Times Square. By the way, OB never tapped out, just yeah. so you know, just just yeah. so you're aware. It never <laughs> it never followed any There's of the rules. There's certain little like yeah. regions in San Diego that like that that. COVID never really. I mean, yeah, they, they may know about it, but they didn't really care. Yeah. Yeah. You're Kobe right. He was one of them, dude. Brown, you you so ever right. go to you ever go to Sunset Cliffs in the beginning of COVID? <laughs> it looked like the freaking county fair. Yeah. It was so crowded, man. You're so right, though. They never tapped out. Never. Well said. Very, very well you said. You want me to say, yeah. since we're here and you brought up this yeah. dinner and you brought it up twice now, you want to know why I am letting you off the hook? In one second, I do. But I want to say before you do that, to all the great friends out there, Hey, listen, um, here's to Corky's Pest Control. And I say it that way because this past weekend, my girlfriend had a dead rat in her backyard. Why did she have a dead rat? Because she lives on a canyon. There are rats and coyotes and mice and snakes. I mean, they're all living right down there, right in the canyon. And sometimes they come up here through the fence. And why was the rat dead? because Corky's Pest Control had serviced her house. That rat clearly took something that Corky's people had set up for that rat to take. And then that rat was trying to scurry away and dude just dropped over. So now she calls me and she's like, hey, there's a dead rat in my backyard. I'm like, uh-huh. And she's like, you gotta, you gotta get rid of it for me. So I come over to the house and she's got this plastic bag and she's like, okay, here's the plastic bag. I'm like, what's that for? She's like, put the dead rat in the plastic bag. I'm like, I'm not putting the dead rat in the plastic bag. She goes, what are you going to do? I said, let's get a shovel. I scooped the dead rat and I threw his ass into the canyon like a real man. Believe me, I was scared of the dead rat just like she was, but she needed me to be a man. <laughs> so I sucked it up and I was a man for a few moments. Hear that, Browner? I respect that, man. Sometimes you just got to, you know, Pick up the dead rat. Respect. Corky's Pest Control. Call 1-800-901-1102. Corky's. All right, Grande. What were you saying, man? Oh, about me letting you off the hook for the dinner? Yeah. I mean, you were, guil you were guilty. You were guilty. I don't know, man. I Easy. disagree. Still. You were charged. You were charged and found guilty. First degree burn. Um. But the reason I am letting you off the hook, I'm not saying Brown is letting you off the hook, is I got two text messages within a span of five minutes Saturday evening. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to call these people the instigators. So listen, you may have been guilty of what you were accused of, which I still <laughs> think is true. But there was two people reveling in the fact that me and Browner were not there. I think the word is joyful. That yeah. me and Browner, like they had more of a kick that me and Browner weren't there. Mm -hmm. And these two text messages, two totally separate text threads, by the way, not on the same chat. Like right. two, two people decided to put a group chat together with me and Browner mm -hmm. and themselves <laughs> and other people at five minutes apart without each of them being on their own thread. So person A did not know that person B also had a group chat going. 
doing the exact same thing, which is trying to rub it in our face that we were not at this dinner. So, Scott, you're off the hook because you weren't being a jerk about it. You were just guilty. And I'm not saying these people were being jerks about it. I just think they were happy that me and Browner weren't there. And Who's those that? two people, A, Bert Grossman, mm-hmm. and B, your girlfriend, Rachel. Oh, my. Both people sent pictures. Lots. Just just, just ecstatic. Just showing off that we were not there. Uh, the first one came from Bert, which was obviously because he didn't ask you guys to pose. He just snapped one. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then the yeah. second one was Rachel, who definitely had you guys pose to rub this one in. So mm-hmm. I'm letting you off the hook because you weren't a jerk about us not being there. See that big ass burrito I had right there? He knew what that picture was being taken for, though. Yeah, I know. Dude, look at that big ass burrito. And that you're drinking good, Corona? Man. Yeah. Did you not learn your lesson the first time? <laughs> um, look at that big ass burrito. One side of it was like salsa verde, the other side of it was like salsa roja. And it was really, really good. It was carne asada and shrimp inside of it. It's a little surf and turf action. It was really tasty. Yeah, really good. So my question is because, you know, whatever, we weren't there. No big deal. I'm over it. But I thought that was a little like weird that they had to rub it in. But uh, did any great friends show up? Did you see sign guy there? Like what, what, what happened? So, so just real quickly on this story from last week, again, I maintain my innocence and, and by the way, just, 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 well, but just to, just to show you one of y'all really did it. Okay. Well, let me just tell you one thing real quick. When Bert's fiance, Tanya showed up, you know, and she saw Linda, you know what she said to Linda? Hmm. I wish you guys would have been there. You know what she said to Linda? Oh my God. Thank you so much for organizing this. And I was like, See Another, Tanya. Okay, that was awesome. okay. You really want to get hooked back into this, dude? Come on, man. You're, gonna, yes, you're now you're, go. you're now gonna throw another person under the. Now you're gonna throw Tanya under the. Come on. Oh my you god, Tanya. A- Tanya is so funny. By the way, Bert's fiance is hilarious. She is so funny, and Joseph, the sign guy. Okay, Joseph, the sign guy, got everybody like in a good spot. He Hammer. started Alex by walking in. He goes, okay, everybody, in honor of someone who's not here, Alex Padilla, let's do one of Alex's favorite things. And he brought shots of mezcal. Damn right. Very smoky. Very smoky. That's the whole point. Yeah. Then later, he came around and he said, in honor of someone else who's not here, let's have a shot of tequila reposado. That was for Big Brown. I don't drink tequila. I understand, but it was just in your honor, honor, dude. Yeah, dude, accept it. And then lastly, at the end of dinner, he brought some other kind of sweet tequila, something desserty kind of tequila. Joseph, the sign guy, was making sure that our table had a really good time. Nice. And we sure did. We sure did. And you know what we did is after we did that, um, Linda took us to her new crib. Oh, she oh, moved. Oh, nice. No, no, she hasn't moved. She bought a new place. And dude, it is torn to shreds. The whole place, except one thing, the backyard patio. And she's like, everybody come because I want to show you my new crib and you'll see that it's torn to shreds. And it was, and it was awesome. And so her last uh, backyard Mar- was cool. No, her last backyard's bomb. This one's even bomber. Damn. Cause I saw a picture from that backyard. I was like, that looks like her. That's what is that her place? That, that, that looks different, but the same. So yeah, she's, uh, she and Austin mazel tough to you guys. Awesome. Awesome place, man. Really great. So it was a beautiful evening. It was a lovely evening. And I wish you guys were there. It was fun. OB, to your point, Brown, no tapping out, dog. Never tapped out. Never lost, as a yeah. great man once said. Yeah. Keenan Although a shout, out, a shout out to Jefferson J. I, I went right by Winston's, man. Places That place is closed. I mean, at least Did it? it was closed yeah. Saturday night. I don't know if it closed, but it wasn't open. Uh, I, Winston is, Winston's is still open. I don't know if it was open that day, but I've been – to OB a couple of times. Uh, it was open when I was down there. Okay, since we're talking about going out, and I know you were supposed to talk about Drew Brees here. Well, we're not but, supposed to. We right, right, well, you teased it, and we will, because mm-hmm. there's things to say about that. Speaking of going out Saturday night, mm-hmm. Browner, did you do what you were said you were going to do on Friday? No. Did you go they- visit the international world-renowned strip club that is Pacers? So it is my friend Tiffany's birthday. And we're taking her for the fun of it. So it got moved to this following Saturday. That was my that was the reason why I made the stop at Tory Holistics. Cause then that makes the night a little more fun, if you know what I mean. So 
And and by the way, I went in there like like the Matrix. You know that part in the Matrix when it was like, what do you need? He's like, guns, more guns. And all the guns come out of like, That's how I went in Tori Holistic. Like, what you need? Stuff, more weed. And just all the weed, I took it out. Yeah. Prom- promo code Kiva. Yeah, promo code is Kiva. Save twenty percent at Tory Holistics. Um, okay, so let let me let me jump into Drew Brees here for a second. I'll start from the beginning. Do you guys remember when the Saints were playing the Bucks in the playoffs? Yes, kind of. Yeah, me too. Kind of also. I'm kind of like I just know that Brady must have won because Brees yeah. was going. Home. Yeah, I don't remember much of it, but here's what I do remember: before the game, Jay Glazer from Fox Sports had a report and the report was this will be drew Brees's last game as the starting quarterback of the saints in the superdome he I, the way i heard it he was saying if breeze retires this is his last game and if he doesn't retire the saints are going to be moving on that's how i heard it i i don't recall glazer ever saying Breeze is 100% retiring. I heard it as Breeze's career with the Saints is over. Now, Drew Breeze has been incommunicado. Generally, when I text Breeze, mm-hmm. he usually gets back, even if it's something like, hey, congratulations, or hey, nice game, or something just simple like, hey, great picture on Instagram, family looks great. He usually is pretty quick to respond. Dead silence. And I'm not sure if Breeze is pissed at me because last year during the flag controversy, I don't know if maybe he thought, I don't know. I mean, did he think that I was anti-Breeze, not pro enough Breeze? I don't know, man. I sent him text saying, hey, if you need help and you want to come on the air and talk about these things, we're here for you, man. I mean, I'm I'm like his Jim Gray to to Kobe Bryant. You know what I mean? I'm just, I'm here to, you want to get the word out, use our airwaves. Haven't heard back from Breeze in quite a while. And so I don't know if he's pissed at me over something. I don't know. When's the last time you texted him? Um, not long ago. I, I, right dur- after the Tiger thing. After the, when Tiger got into an accident and it was it was reported that he was going to meet Breeze, I, I texted him like, hey, man, hope you're doing okay. This is a pretty crazy story. You know, just, just something. Nothing, man. Radio silence. You're getting mm-hmm. Dudley. Yeah, I'm oh, getting Chris Dudley. Damn. Or no, Jared Dudley. Yeah. You're getting, getting Dudley, Dudley, bro. Yeah. So here's the thing about Breeze. And I said this to you guys from the beginning. When I'm right, I actually kind of brag about being right because it's so frequent, infrequent. I'm not convinced Breeze is retiring. I've not been convinced that he's retiring from the beginning. I'm convinced he's played his last game for the Saints. By the way, the mayor of New Orleans this past weekend, <laughs> Ra Ryan for Russell Wilson. Hey, Russell Wilson, come to New Orleans. I was like, hey, Miss Mayor. Do you think Breeze can like move on yet before you go campaigning for a new quarterback? I mean, Drew Breeze was part of saving New Orleans, of reviving the Saints organization. Maybe it was just viving it. Maybe there was no reviving. But the mayor of New Orleans practically like campaigning to get Russell Wilson to come to town. If you're Russell Wilson, you don't want to go take over for Breeze. You'd rather go to Dallas, okay? They haven't had a quarterback in ages. And don't sell me on, you know, on Dak. Okay. Is Breeze retiring? So I don't think he'll be back with the Saints. I think the Saints would be wise now to move on. You've had the same coach, quarterback, and offensive coordinator combination for nearly 15 years. You've won a Super Bowl. You've had tremendous success. You've been to the playoffs every year. And Breeze has set all these records. But it's over now. They're not going back to the Super Bowl. They're not going to win another Super Bowl title with Drew Brees. If they were going to, they likely would have, or they would have had a better chance as Drew Brees was a younger man. He's dealt with a lot of injuries, been hit a lot, age. But is Drew Brees done? I believe that with all the quarterback movement that's going to happen this offseason in the NFL, there's likely to be a team out there that goes, you know what we could really benefit from? his experience, leadership, and reputation. But they got to be a team that's probably on the verge. Like, I'll give you an example. Like maybe a San Francisco, just using as an example. Just using an example. Okay, a team that was in a Super Bowl two years ago that had all kinds of quarterback problems last year. So is Drew Brees retiring? 
Todd Durkin out in Scripps Ranch has been his trainer for years and years. Todd Durkin was posting videos this past weekend, and it sounds like a big setup to me. You know, hey, Drew, where are you going? No, 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 only down to the black car, Drew. Wait, he's going further. And now he's coming back, and they've got a clock. And that's the fastest time anybody's ever done this because no one's ever done it before. Does that look like a guy who's setting up for retirement? I don't know. Play the video, Alex. You have it? He wants to go to Maui. I don't know where he's going. Let's go. Time is on. Go. Where are we going, Maui? Come on, Tim. To the black and back, Drew. To the black. The black, Drew. Drew to the black. Drew. What is he doing? The Raiders? The black? Drew. What is he doing? He said to the street. Drew. What are you doing? Okay. He's never done that. Hurry up! Don't know what he's doing. DB, come on! What? Oh my gosh! I'm not sure what he's doing. Never quite been done before. He needed a challenge. I said black and back. Woo! Time. That's a new record because it's never been done before. Uh, that is fifty point five three. All right, so Todd Durkin, been been LT's trainer, Breeze's trainer, got famous because he was training these these guys. Breeze to the black one, Breeze. Oh wait, he's going further. He's working harder. He's doing something he's never done before. Is Breeze retiring? He doesn't look like a guy who's retiring. Is Breeze going to find a new home? Is he going to try and Tom Brady this thing? Is there a team out there that's close that thinks that Breeze can help them in a year or two? Let me get to that part of the story coming up next. Stick around. All right, everybody. It is a Monday afternoon here on Kaplan and Crew. If you are just getting with us on the radio, here is the conversation we were having. Is Drew Brees retiring? I'll reset the whole thing for you. Jay Glazer reported from Fox Sports. Breeze is done in New Orleans. This is when New Orleans was bounced from the NFL's playoffs this past year. Breeze and Sean Payton have been together probably 15, 16 years, had great success. They've won a Super Bowl. They helped bring New Orleans back after the Hurricane Katrina and uh, helped bring back that building, helped revive that organization, that city. It's been a hero to that town. But at this stage of the game, when you haven't won a Super Bowl in like 11 or 12 years, like you get to that point where you're like, okay, we're paying this guy a fortune. He's now in his 40s. I don't think we're going to win a Super Bowl in the next couple of years with Drew Brees at quarterback. So it looks like, at least based on the video of Todd Durkin's place out in Scripps Ranch where Drew is working like a beast, if you're planning on retiring, are you working like this to go to NBC to call Notre Dame football games? Or do you work like this because you're planning on coming back and playing in the NFL. So, gentlemen, what do you guys think? Drew Brees retiring, or does video like this suggest the other I'll side? I'll let Browner go first, because I have a very different take on that question. Look, man, you know, Scott, you funny. You a funny character. You know, when I said Drew Brees ain't retiring, you looked at me like I was silly, but you kind of heard me out. So respect Why, you. Why? No, 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 you looked at me like I was silly, but you heard me out, so respect to you. Respect. And then I said, he's going to the 49ers. And you said, Pff. not only did you say, Pff. you know who else said, Pff. oh, John Clayton said, Pff. we all remember that. I sat there. It was me. No, I, I actually don't remember it. I don't remember saying, <laughs> I don't, I actually don't remember you saying it and put a camera on him because I want people to see his physical comedy. Um, not only do I not remember you saying oh it, but I don't remember saying no chance. At all. And by the way, 49ers in the last segment, when I said maybe he'll go to a team that's like playoff ready, Super Bowl kind of ready. And I, I just pulled the 49ers out of my, you know what? Where you, where, is, how did that get in your subconscious mind though, brother? <laughs> huh? How did Browner that get in that. your subconscious mind? Browner, Browner definitely said that. Browner, Browner must have said that. that. Browner must have said that to Burt on a Browner Burt podcast. Browner said this. that to you here and then said it to you and John Clayton here. And John Clayton laughed at me. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Maybe he did. I don't remember. No, I can't. I, I can't wait. I don't remember laughing at you. 
I can't wait till this come true. Because I told you I'll be right a lot. Y'all just be thinking I'll be wrong all the time. Well, you are just right. told you when you're talking basketball, you're always wrong. But go ahead. Yeah. Like, I, like I said, Drew Brees <laughs> ain't retiring, okay? Drew Brees will be putting on the helmet to run out of somebody's tunnel. The question is who? And I told y'all, San Francisco. All right, here's the thing. Drew Brees is not retiring because he's not going to go live on some beach somewhere and become a pro golfer. Like, that is not what he's doing. But evidence to me tells me he is done playing football. You remember when Jason Witten retired the first time? Jason mm -hmm. Witten. And became the analyst for Monday Night Football. I what was the biggest difference between Jason Witten, the football player, and the analyst physically? They were both terrible. No, physically, appearance-wise. Jason uh -huh. Wynn got a hair transplant. Jason Wynn all of a sudden went from bald tight end to luscious head of hair. Did y'all notice in that video that Drew Brees got a luscious head of hair all of a sudden out of nowhere? Drew uh, Brees oh. Oh. is getting ready to look good in a suit on television. Mm -hmm. Drew Brees looks good in shoulder pads that can cover certain things. A suit that is fitted nowadays, as we saw with Romo's PP stain, shows everything. Drew Brees is getting ready to go jump in the booth. The hair is the biggest giveaway that he's done playing football. That workout is for your legs, man. He's going to be sitting down most of the no, time. No, they're standing up. You got the stand-up shot. Now, you don't watch Monday Night Football? Lewis, you see the whole suit almost nowadays. I'm telling oh, you. Wait a second. Wait a second. You're, you're, you're looking at Breeze's payload. Let me take a look one more time. Okay. Alex, for those of you that are listening on radio, Alex has freezed framed the picture and has put an arrow at Drew Breeze's hair. And I don't remember Jason Witten as being like a bald oh. player. Oh. And I don't remember him. Did he really truly get a hair transplant? Dude, I'm going to look it up. Uh, right that, I, that I do agree. He did have a hair transplant. He See, I didn't about know that. It. I don't I didn't know that. And I don't remember him being like like some baldy player. Um, okay. So go. Alex has shown us a picture right now. And on one side is okay, yeah, thinning hair, and the other side mm -hmm. is a much thicker head of hair. Like like that's like no hair. You could mm -hmm. see the outline of where it used to be, and then boom, retires. Bam, mm -hmm. hair. Mm -hmm. And you're saying Breeze, who has a you know, thin hairline. Right. It wasn't like he was like wit and bald. But you're saying that he's having some sort of hair transplant? It definitely, I mean, look at, I mean, it, it's. Nah, uh, his hair just now, grew. No, no. Now, no, we're no. Looking at, now we're looking at pictures of Breeze here and his, and his receding hairline. Sorry, Drew, if you're listening right now when we're taking a look I mean, at you're it. You're already, right you're already on the no call list. Not I know. I'm not getting a call back anymore. This is, you guys, this is, you know, this is, well, this is why I think that, that you can't include these two things. One, during the season, he's putting on a helmet on and off his head all year, so his hair is never going to look good because of what a helmet does to your hair. Two, it's the off season, so guys tend to look a little better, more presentable in the off season because they're doing things have, with their wives. You also have times to do medical procedures that might take a little bit that you will never do during a season, but you can do when you're off season slash retired, never playing again. I just saw a picture of him not long ago on his Instagram, and it doesn't necessarily mean it was taken right away. But I actually did. Uh, oh, I'm glad you bring that up because I went to go his Instagram to see if he posted anything about, you know, anything possible. Because, you know, Drew Brees loves the ads, so maybe he got some, you know, doctor whatever. Um, but those, those ads are like the pictures that he's posted lately are like ads for things, and they're old pictures. They're not new pictures. Mm -hmm. There's no yeah. new picture of Drew post whatever there's a picture of his kid though who got hit in the face with a basketball and lost a tooth i can tell you that right now nice and a little yeah. instagram stalking there scott i don't know if i'd call it stalking i mean it was in my my feed listen man but, sometimes when you get dudley you just gotta take it like a man and just keep it rolling bro you know it's fine by me i mean listen it's not like breeze and i were best friends um but generally you know he was an answer his text kind of guy i may go the email route and see if if that changes Maybe he changed his number. It's possible. possible. He's retired now. I, he doesn't need those same football people calling him. Change your retired. number. Why don't retired? you? Why don't we change teams? Why don't we text Todd Durkin mm -hmm. and see what's up? Go from just go to that. Yeah, Todd Durkin is. We had Todd Durkin on weekly when he had the NBC show. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to talk to Todd. I think it'd be great.
Did he Maybe change Rachel. his number? I, I haven't texted him, but I'm he, sure he's fine. He would obviously know if Drew changed his. That's true. That's true. He would. I mean, so maybe, you guys think he's playing? Yes. No, no, no. Both of you are in agreement for the first time in forever that Drew Brees is playing, just not for the Saints. Yeah, I think Drew Brees is going to play now. Now Browner brings up the 49ers and loves to say, you know, hey, I already said the 49ers. It's a team. It's one of, it's one of 32. Take off the take off the Saints. One of 31. But where else could Brees go? I'll give you an Chicago. example. I don't think he'd go to Chicago for this reason. He's been playing for so long indoors mm. and been playing in a division that's kind of more warm weather. That's true. That I don't, I don't think he'd go to Chicago. I don't think he'd thrive in the cold weather. But Green Bay, Minis Chicago. Minnesota, and Detroit play in dome stadiums. Fair enough. But you still got to play You know, most of your home games, eight home games in Chicago, and call them three or four of them are going to be cold and windy. True. So I have a hypothetical but, for you. Oh. I have this a hypothetical. Like, this is not really – I don't know if they're comparable, but uh, according to Ian Rappaport, the Washington football team is expected to release Alex Smith. Mm -hmm. Now, if you had to choose for next year, Alex Smith or Drew Brees is your quarterback, is that even a comparable question? Like, Or is it clearly Drew Brees? Uh, yeah, man. I mean, Alex Smith, I don't even want him playing football, let alone for a team I cheer for because I don't want him to get hurt. Because and according I to Ian Rappaport – if the Washington football team does release Alex Smith, the Bears are very interested in Alex Smith. God damn it. Oh, but wouldn't you rather have Alex Smith than Mitch Trubisky? I mean, I would. Here's, I'd rather I mean, Mitch is gone. It's between Nick oh, Foles or Alex yeah. Smith. Listen, let me answer your question. No, because I don't want him to get hurt in a Bears uniform. I just, I, I their offensive line is nowhere near capable of protecting the guy. That fragile. I just, I Alex Smith's story has been fantastic. I wanted to end on a positive note. I do not think it will end on a positive note playing quarterback for the Chicago Bears. All right, let me let me ask you this. I, I'm looking at Breeze and I'm thinking to myself, is he really going to retire? Okay, and I don't believe he is. I don't believe he's going to retire. I didn't um, convince you, huh? No. But let me ask you this: If you were the Rams, just asking, if you were the Rams, who would you rather have? Matthew Stafford or Drew Brees? Oh, Stafford. Drew Brees. For wait, for a year or for going forward? No, for call it two years, because that's all really Stafford's deal is for is for two years. I'd rather have Drew Brees for the next two years. Stafford. Okay. Let me ask you this. If you were the Miami Dolphins and you drafted Tua, and there's been a lot of talk about what if they traded Tua Terrible. and they somehow got Deshaun Watson, et cetera, et cetera. What if you what if you thought about it this way? What if Drew Brees went to Miami, a team that seems to be on the rise, in a division where Tom Brady and the Patriots are no longer the only team in town? You got to deal with Buffalo now. But what about Miami? Warm weather city. He almost went there at the beginning of his first free agency. This is 15 years ago. Uh, Miami needs quarterback, and they've got a good defense, and they're they're kind of getting closer. What do you think about maybe Drew Brees Miami? Needs, Drew Brees needs the exact same thing that happened to Tom Brady. He needs a ready-to-win-now team. Mm -hmm. And I get that the Dolphins' defense was amazing last year, but that offense has got lots and lots of work to do. I, they don't have any weapons on offense. I don't think Miami is – like he, he needs to go to a team that's already almost there. Now, I don't even know if that team exists, to be honest with you guys. Like, you keep saying 49ers. That's true. That's but I, true. I don't know if that team exists this year. Like I the, think the closest right. you can get to that, though, is San Francisco because they've got their run game built in. Yeah. Their defense, once it gets healthy, they'll be one of the top five defenses in the league. So I, he'll be get, put, he'll be put in great positions on the field, you would assume. So in, they, in their front office, credit to John Lynch, they get the job done, man. They get the job done. So they plug all their holes. But I just want to say, Drew Brees is not Tom Brady. In other words, to think that Brees is going to just show up to somebody's organization and immediately do what Tom Brady did. He's just not the same guy. And when he walks into the locker room, if it's a young team, guys will say, Hey, let's, let's do what he's done. Cause man, he's had an unbelievable career, 80 plus thousand passing yards, hall of famer, et cetera. But is Drew Brees, Tom Brady, where you walk into the locker room and everybody goes, if you want to win a Super Bowl, do what he says. But right. let me ask you another Drew question. Brees might think himself of that. Like, I don't know if he is, but. I bet you Drew Brees thinks he is. They can go into any locker room and turn it around to a, a championship contender. Let me ask both of y'all a question. I would like a direct answer from both of y'all. Other than Tom Brady, 
if a guy walks in a locker room, who are you all ears on? Patrick Mahomes. Okay. Why? Because he's just proven that he can do whatever he wants on the football field. Like he has, like he may not have the the success that Brady's had. Obviously, no one has. But the things that he does on the football field, no one can do. I listen if if he speaks, I listen. No, uh, he doesn't have that kind of clout for me. <laughs> What wow. he did in the Super Bowl and that loss was incredible, dude. Like, I'm still blown away that he did not break the sack record that first single game because he was running around like crazy. I don't know. I think he, didn't, he didn't help himself running backwards every play, though. He didn't yeah, but you're choice. asking me the question of you're asking the question was if it, other than Brady, right? When a, when any player walks in and says, "Follow my lead," who else would you follow? A la Brady? Oh, I I thought of an answer, Browner. You ready? Yes. LeBron. Football, man. And then nobody. Okay. Oh, by the way, I got I can listen. I gotta back LeBron up on something. I know y'all y'all shocked by me saying it, but I gotta back LeBron up on something when we get some free time. But I can't believe you wouldn't say Drew Brees, bro. Stop it. What's wrong with you? No, no, no. Drew Brees does not have the same kind of clout that Tom Brady has. Okay. He doesn't. I mean, it's 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 not an opinion. It's a statistical who, fact. Who would you rather have walk into the locker room for you, J.J. Watt or Drew Brees? Depends. Who's no, my quarterback. I, that, well, that's well, it would be Drew Brees. No, but I'm saying like it. You know, like if if I already have a Minnesota, good quarterback, Minnesota. Oh, Drew Brees. No, yeah, actually, I mean, J.J. Watt because we had no no defensive pressure at all. No, but Drew Brees has. Um, if 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 Tom Brady has a hundred percent credibility. Drew Brees has 80% credibility. You know what I'm saying? He, he, he doesn't have the rings. And, and Brady has something that Brees will never have now. Well, I don't think he'll ever have it, which is I won six championships in one place and I duplicated it with a bad organization. You know, Brees um, won a Super Bowl with New Orleans when they were considered a bad organization previous to, and he's maintained their competitiveness. They're a championship contender every year. Or they have been. They just haven't been able to make it back to the Super Bowl. They've been to the playoffs. Here's, here's also why when you when I say Patrick Mahomes, it's all it's his ability, but th just th think of it this way. How many locker rooms in the NFL would Patrick Mahomes walk into and that whole locker room be like, dude, we got a chance to win now? Mm. Everyone. Every single one. Everyone. Just by dude. his presence of being the quarterback. That's true. That's a good point. Everyone. Every single team that if Patrick Mahomes walks into your locker room and he's your quarterback, that whole team now thinks they have a chance to win. I think that's fair. I think it's fair. But he's but he doesn't have what Brady has, which right. is but nobody you do does. What I you say, say, if you just do what I tell you to do, we'll win. And now Brady has that even more because he just won by just doing that. When he's texting everybody at 5 a.m., we're gonna win the Super Bowl. We're going to win this. And then they actually go and win the Super Bowl. Yeah. So what you're saying is correct. No one will ever have what Brady has. But can again. we can we make a small notation on this Brady thing? Yes, he went to a bad organization. That team was not bad. Right. No, that's but, why I said like Drew Brees needs that too. I think if that you need to have like a, a playoff championship contender ready. Yes. And then Brees can walk in and maybe elevate it. Yes, maybe. But I don't know. I can just tell you this. Watching him work out yesterday, it's not the intensity of the workout. It's not that he ran further or longer than, than has ever been done before the way Todd Durkin was advertising it. It's not that. Um, it's the social media tease that has me believing that he's going to come back. Um, in other words, it's not the workout like, oh, he's working out like a maniac. He must be coming back. It's not the workout. It's not the intensity of the workout. It's the social media tease. Hey, Drew, what are you doing? No, I only said go to the black car. He's going so much further than has ever gone. He's coming back. Look at that 50 seconds. That's a new record. Why? Because it's never been done before. It's almost as if they wrote it. It, wa it wasn't like, hey, listen, Todd, um, today at the workout, here's what I want to do. I'm going to run. And instead of turning around the black car like we normally do, I'm going to go all the way back and then I'm going to come back. And then you're going to tell me the time and it's going to be a record. And you're going to say it's never been done before. And we're going to tease everybody. And I think that the choreography of the social media tease tells me he's coming back.
not the intensity of the work. Yeah, I mean, it all signs point to the guy's not retiring, right? And now the whole yeah. joke on Twitter is his whole city of Berlin's hostage because he hasn't made up his mind yet because he is contractually obligated or contractually signed to the Saints still. The Saints also gave Taysom Hill $16 million to be waiting around. Dumb and move. they also, I don't know if they still have Jameis on the roster, what their plan is, but the Saints are pretty much, I mean, shoot, you said it. The freaking mayor is, is petitioning uh, whatever you want to call it for Russ yeah. Wilson to go there like he's a free agent or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you see right, that so video, me, by the way? Of the mayor? Yeah. Yeah, like she's standing in front of like the Saints helmet yeah. and the flags. There. She's like, hey, Russell, come down to New Orleans. Ciara, we'd love to have you guys down here. Come on down. She can't this wait mayor. to kick Drew Brees to the curb. I know, right? Like, Get him out of here. Hey, listen, um, before we hit this break and uh, coming up, I do want to get to a bunch of other stuff like the Padres starting this past weekend at spring training. San Diego State's basketball team, one game till the finish of the regular season we'll get, and a huge weekend against Boise State. Um, I do want to make mention of LeBron James and Zlatan Ibrahimovic. V yes, I want to talk about that coming up. Um, the Golden Globe Awards, I didn't watch them, but I've seen some of the awards and, I, and I've seen some of the shows that won awards, so I want to get to that. Hey, before the we Nets do, though, getting Alex, crushed by the Mavs? What? You know, that... I'm sure. I'm sure uh, Browner would like to talk about that. No Kyrie, no KD. Oh, funny how when you're missing two of your three best players, you lose games. So, oh, you, oh so now James Harden is as good as LeBron. Got it. Thanks. Thanks. Mm. I'm going to hold mm. on to that. Mm. All right. Let me just make a quick mention here. Alex, tell me the story of you and Gary Cooper getting down and dirty because every week Gary Cooper comes on, he talks about Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services, yeah. and he's he's resonating. Hey, five hundred thousand dollar loan, it only takes this much money down. You should get into home ownership rather than renting. It has resonated, and we are in action. Is that right? Gary spoke to my soul the last couple of weeks. So, uh, me and the and the lady have been uh, expecting some 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 money to come in. We have got some money now for a down payment. And when Gary said five hundred k, seventeen five down. X amount of rent or mortgage, it just kind of all started hitting home. And when we finally sat down, me and the lady, we were like, I think we're, I think we're ready. I really do think we're ready. And we started the process this weekend, meeting with Gary Cooper tonight. So very excited and nervous, more nervous than excited. Hey, look, this could be you too. I mean, maybe it's your first time buyer. Maybe you're looking to refinance and save money. Maybe you're trying to sell at the, at the height of the market, whatever your real estate needs are. You call our guy, 858-376-1299, 858-376-1299 for our man, Gary Cooper, Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services. He's going to take real good care of you. Guy's going to work for you 24-7, going to get the deal done. Gary Cooper, Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services, 858-376-1299. All right, lots to get to. I mentioned LeBron. I want to talk about LeBron. I want to talk about San Diego State's basketball team. I want to start talk about the start of spring training. Lots to get to. Stick around. Hey, great friends. What's up? It is a Monday afternoon here on Kaplan and Crew. If you're with us on 1090, utilizing the radio airwaves, glad to have you guys around. In fact, this morning I was on KUSI with Paul Rudy and he said, what do you like to be called now? Are you radio broadcaster, podcaster? I'm like, Paul, we have a podcast and we utilize radio airwaves as a distribution platform. And, you know, for a guy who's a traditional TV guy, He's like, his mind is blown. He's like, what? What do you mean? You take the podcast and air it on radio. That's exactly what I mean. It's pretty simple stuff. Hey, speaking of KUSI, really, really quickly, um, did you guys happen to see the story uh, this past weekend about one of the longtime San Diego television personalities that died, a gentleman by the name of Rod Luck? Do you guys, does anybody know who that is? I mean, I, I yes, don't mean to sound I do. disrespectful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Browner, I know you worked at KUSI at one time, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, was, I did. Was Rod, Luck, was Rod Luck there back then? No. <laughs> at that point in time, Rod Luck had gone his separate ways from KUSI, but I, I knew of Rod Luck at the time, yes. It's interesting. KUSI was celebrating the life of Rod Luck this past weekend, and Dave Scott, their longtime weather guy, That's kind my of a guy quirky right guy. But he's an interesting character. I love him. Um, he... <laughs> He did this thing, this like uh, this memory of, of Rod Luck it was actually beautifully done. And um, I was really saddened to hear the news of Rod Luck dying this weekend. And I'll tell you why. 
when I came to San Diego in 2001, he was Alex. I'm telling you right now, he was the TV personality of town. Like he was the guy on the mornings. He, they just sent him out in the streets. He just yapped with everybody. It didn't matter what it was. It, and more often than not, it was very funny and charming and cute. He would come to like where Billy Ray and I would be set up to broadcast and he'd come over and do a live shot and go, Hey, I'm standing right over here. Look, Hey, I got mighty 1090 right over here. I know this guy, Billy Ray Smith. Hey, Billy Ray. And who, I don't know who this guy is, but uh, Billy Ray can talk to me about <laughs> it. was just hilarious. It was always funny. And, um, but what I remember is late in his career, um, I think he got fired um, I want to say, I don't know if it was domestic something or gosh, I hate to say this stuff without really knowing, you know, but I'm, I'm, I'm like almost sure I'm, I'm right there. And so he couldn't get back on the radio. He couldn't get back on TV. There was just some stuff that had been said about him and perhaps some charges against him that just made him, I guess, unhirable, but 70 years old, dude, 70 years old, man, I'm telling you, dude, that's young. I know it seems like a long time. When you're 35, 70 seems like a long time, but I'm 51 and I'm like, holy God, dude, that's 19 years, you know? Um, so anyway, I'm sending out love. I don't know what happened late in his life. I hope everything was well. They said he died with his, his wife and his children nearby. Much love to, uh, to Rod Luck, a great San Diego television personality. He really was. All right, Alex, you got the, uh, the Aztec for Life hoodie on today. Mm -hmm. last week I asked you, I said, come on, man, I got to get back into San Diego state basketball. I've not been around all year. I watched the Boise state game. I want to say Thursday night of last week. I caught a little bit of their game Saturday against Boise state, two straight wins had to go to overtime. The first time one Ten straight wins. Yeah. It was two straight over Boise. State. Oh yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so great weekend for San Diego State and pick it up from there because like you say, 10 straight wins now for the Aztecs. 10 straight wins for the Aztecs. They will wrap it up March 3rd at UNLV, 6 p.m. game. But yeah, man, the, they are now in first place in the Mountain West. Obviously, uh, if Boise State was second, they dropped to fourth after the two losses. R a bit of a weird game on Thursday because they had like a 17, 15 point lead and then they kind of, they didn't kind of, they blew the lead and had to go to overtime, but then they dominated overtime and ended up covering anyways. And then Saturday was just back and forth the entire time. And Dutcher was talking about how these are the kind of games that you need when you when you head to March because we're now in March and these tournament games, they're always close. And you really never know. So uh, shout out San Diego State. First place, 10 wins in a row. 10 wins in a row. And like I said, they'll wrap it up on Wednesday at UNLV. Let me hear what uh, Coach Dutcher had to say after the game. This was after Saturday's game. Let me take a, take a listen to this. That was a big-time college basketball game. And Boise came ready to play, but so did the Aztecs. And uh, I take great comfort in having five seniors in the starting lineup. And they make a coach look good. And these two guys next to me, uh, four-year starters in the program, uh, four-year seniors, uh, have won a lot of timely games. And this was one of the most important. We put ourselves in a position uh, to go to Vegas and try to win a conference title. And I couldn't be more proud of a team uh, their resolve and their toughness uh, to beat a very good Boise team on our home floor on senior night. All right. So he, because of the shot, he said these two guys sitting next to me and I couldn't see who it was Jordan Shackle, and Matt Mitchell. God, it's amazing. These guys are seniors, huh? Yeah. God, it sucks. That just sucks so bad that, and I saw what coach Dutcher was saying over the weekend that, you know, senior, I mean, can't they technically can't they come back because of NCAA Allegedly. didn't everybody get an extra year or something? So they could come back, Isn't but that the case yeah. they could come back. I'll tell you, man, they should. Um, Both of them. I, I know I would, if I were them, I mean, you know, it's, you know, it's sad. And I say sad, look, it's great that these guys played. It's terrific that they've, they've put themselves in this great position now to be a 20 win team and, and to possibly win the, the Mountain West, the regular season title. And then you got to win the, the conference tournament. And then there's, there's, if you listen to college basketball experts this year, they tell you that the blue bloods aren't really there. North Carolina and Duke and these kinds of traditional powerhouse kinds of schools, they're not in it this year. I mean, if you look at the top 25 and you see Gonzaga and Baylor and Alabama, Michigan, Illinois. You're like, wow, like what, what happened Iowa. to college basketball this year? Yeah. I'm like what happened out here this year? And if you weren't paying attention, like I wasn't, you're like shocked to see this. 
it's amazing, first and foremost, that Matt Mitchell and Jordan Shackle are both seniors. I remember those kids when they were freshmen. I remember thinking Shackle's the kid who could really become a big star based on his high school career. I don't remember exactly where he played it, either in like the southern part of LA, but he was on like a great team. In fact, I think a couple of his high school teammates were one and done kids, guys who went to college and hustled to the NBA. And Shackle was part of that state championship team. He had great pedigree, and I thought he was going to be a terrific player. Good for Shackle. Mitchell, I'm telling you right now, that dude, unless he becomes another Charles Barkley, that guy should be trying to become the next Antonio Gates with that body. But to not have any fans, I would always go to senior night every year at San Diego State. I want to just honor these kids, be there, see them raise their jersey, be there to say thank you. Hey, great career, man. Awesome. I know how hard it is to become a college basketball player, to make it through a program, to transfer in whatever your circumstances were, it's hard. You know, it's, you don't just go from high school to Stanford and four years later you graduate and you get a job at a tech company. Things go crazy. You know, things go haywire and you got to persevere to get through think, as a college athlete. I mean, I guess the question that I would ask, are these the two most winningest players in the history of the, the, the school basketball program? Because last year they were undefeated for most of the year. Uh, undefeated totally, yeah? Or did they lose one? Oh, they lost like – they ended up losing like two games. I think. So they lost two games. They've done well this year. And they're so seniors. They've been, yeah, they've been competitive every year that those guys have been in the program. So if I were them, this would be a great opportunity for them to do something more like what happened last year by coming back if the NCAA continues to allow that to happen. Who knows with those liars? And see where it takes them, man. I just got to say it's just unfortunate that at, you, know, you, you get to the end of your senior year – and there is nobody, you know, there yeah. are 12,414 people cheering, saying, thank you guys. Great job, man. Glad you came to San Diego State. Glad you had a terrific career. Good luck here in the tournament. But uh, here's the question, though. This is really what it comes down to. Again, Gonzaga, Baylor, Iowa, Michigan, Illinois, Alabama, schools that are not usually like top, top, top. Is this the year? Could San Diego State make noise this year? Because of what Coach Dutcher's just saying about five seniors, seniors, it's very well possible. And you you also bring up uh, twenty wins. You know, there's only three teams right now in the top twenty five that have twenty wins. The Aztecs could be the fourth team. They're now ranked nineteenth, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, as of this morning. But are they? I mean, you look at the size they got. They got experienced guard, and you know we all. What is? What do you always hear about March Madness? Guard, play. guard play, guard play, guard play, guard play. They got experienced guards. They got shooters that can make shots. They got size this year. I think the Aztecs were set up last year to make a deep run. I don't know. It's so hard to say, right? Because how many teams? I mean, it's the COVID year. I mean, it's, USD played thirteen games this year, so oh. it's difficult to say like who's really good, who's really bad. I mean, you think Baylor and Gonzaga are obviously amazing. Everybody else and Michigan is really good too. So I think the Aztecs can definitely I would be shocked if they don't win at least two games. I would okay. say I would say this year, more than any year, fewer teams have been tested because a lot of high level teams haven't gone against each other because something has either been COVID's been in the way or scheduling has been in the way. It's just been an odd year for teams out of conference to be facing each other. So I this year is as wide open as any year I could ever remember. Because you don't know who who is going to like come out of nowhere. And San Diego State's a great candidate for that because they have the senior play. Because at the end of the day, when you get a freshman like Kay Cunningham from Oklahoma State, a team that comes out of nowhere this year and 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 to be a part of the national story, they could get a team like that. They could beat a team like that because that play that team's one guy driven by a freshman. Like it could happen. I also think that, you know how more often than not, when we get ready for the NCAA tournament, we're talking about, um, you know, did your conference prepare you, you know, and Gonzaga always plays in the West Coast Conference week schedule. They don't have anybody right. to really push them, you know, but they always are able to hang. Um, this year, the Mountain West is terrible, as it usually is. And but the top half is better than it's been in a long time. And I don't know if that's because of COVID, but if you look at the top half, like when I was watching the game on Thursday, um, they were talking about how Mount West trying to get four teams in this year. And I, I mean, maybe I wasn't paying that much attention. I don't know if they'll get four teams in, but 
they were saying like the the, the bottom half is really really bad, mm. like really really bad for Mount Washington. But these top four teams, they're pretty good. We keep talking. We talk a lot about how Gonzaga's conference isn't that great. But I'm telling you, if San Diego State can make a couple of runs to the final four, they will get the same respect Gonzaga does without the competition. Because Gonzaga doesn't even really play anybody outside of their outside of their conference either. That's why they post so many wins. And that's why I think this year would be a great opportunity for this team to make an Elite Eight final four run, have those two guys come back, Back that up with another one. And now your name has been in the national stream two years in a row. You start getting those recruits. You start piling those wins up. And you're a tournament team every year. Well, they were that. They were that for a long time. They, they. I mean, th this has been probably, I, I got to say, 15 years. I'm trying to remember what Kawhi's freshman year was. but Maybe like six, seven, somewhere in that neighborhood. But I mean, Kawhi's they, freshman year? Yeah. Like eight, nine, I think. There you go. So, I mean, they, we were only in school together for a year. I mean, they've been good for a long time. They've been good for 13 years, you know, and, and I say 13 years in that stretch. There were a couple of down years a little bit, but they've been good for a long time, which is why most people consider them to be, you know, really one of the best programs on the West Coast. So I just, again, not knowing a whole lot about college basketball this year and having not paid a lot of attention. And, but when I look at the top 25, I go, wow. This is not the traditional top 25. So maybe San Diego State could do something this year. You know, maybe they could make a big run. I thought uh, Gottlieb called the game on Thursday. I thought he made a, a, an observation that I've made that I think is, is, is very true. That San Diego State, at least Brian Dutcher, is kind of back to doing what made San Diego State so successful under Steve Fisher, which is, yeah, it's great to have Jalen McDaniels. It's great to have yep. Malik Pope. And it's great to have Winston Shepard. But if you start relying on these top top recruits, and you kind of get away from, let's find guys that grind. Mm -hmm. Let's guy, let's find guys that play defense. Let's get transfers that were good in other programs that can be good for us. Malachi Flynn. Um, so they're back to doing what made them so successful. This is Brian Dutcher's fourth year in charge. This will be the third out of three out of four years he would have last year. They obviously would have probably been a one or two seed. So this will be the third tournament berth. That under in four years for Brian Dutcher, they're, they're kind of getting back in that fourth year or the second year. You know, they were on the bubble of making it too. So I think Dutcher has gone back to the blueprint that made San Diego State what they are, and it's successful. And look at this team it's a, it's a, yeah, you got Mitchell and you got Shackle, but then you got all these other guys that transferred in, these seniors, these fifth year seniors, and it's just working. And, and that has been proven to work on the Mesa, and they went back to it. And I think that we're now setting ourselves up to be that team again. I know Browners always talk about a couple final four runs, final four runs. I just think making the tournament every single year is just as important as how deep you go. Making uh, it every year is deep as important. It, that, making it every year is important for the coach when it comes to contract negotiations. Making it every year, making a run every year is important to who comes to your school the following year. Making a run deep into the tournament brings more ad dollars to your university because it brings more money to your conference because it brings better players to your university. So I think that that's what I mean by going deeper in the tournament. You'll get better players because that's national recognition for the guys that come to your university. Well, hey, great job, coach. And to all those guys out there who are seniors who did not have a chance to have a senior night, uh, hey, I'll just say it like this. I stand there and I cheer for you because I, I want to say thanks. Great job. Like you came here, you committed, you made it through, you've helped build. Um, same thing to these young guys. I mean, Mitchell and Shackle in particular, um, who were pure homegrown kids. So, all right, listen, let me uh, have a minute here to talk about the Total T Clinic, and then I want to get into the Padres and the start of spring training. So I was at the Total T Clinic on Friday of last week, right? And I go into the room where I'm going to get my B12 and my testosterone shot. And the nurse says to me, hey, I haven't seen you here in, in quite a while. And there were two guys in the lobby, by the way. Both of them saw me, like kind of made a nod, like, hey, man, how you doing? I'm like, yo, what's up, man? How you doing? Great friends. And so what she told me, what the nurse told me was this. She was, Scott, I don't know what has happened in the last few weeks, but it's like every guy who comes in here is mentioning you guys and the show. And I'm like, here's what's happening. Um, we were not on the radio for a, quite a while. We got back on the radio in August, September, October, November. You kind of get into the new year and you're like, hey, it's still this pandemic. Kaplan's telling me total T. I don't feel so good. I don't feel so strong. I don't feel so virile. Gosh, I never even thought about testosterone. 
it's it's becoming, I guess this is what I'm saying. It's becoming more accepted. No one's laughing at you anymore. Oh, really? You're on testosterone. What's your deal? No, now everybody's like, oh, you're not on testosterone? You probably should consider that. And what I was blown away by was, again, the nurse saying, how many guys are coming in right now and mentioning the show? So to all of you out there, thank you for supporting our sponsors. Thank you for mentioning us when you go in. And I hope that you have the same results that I have on testosterone because I'm feeling good, strong, motivated, clear-minded. I feel like my body is strong to fight off infection. And um, I feel like in the other areas, Browner, and frankly, I feel like I'm bringing the heat is what I'm saying. Man, listen, man, you get a little more uh, MPHs on that fastball. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Just go yeah. make sure you stay go hide inside, if you know what I mean. I do. Hey, I'd say this to Drew Brees. If you're not done, come to the Total T Clinic, young man, and be that that guy who was that second-round pick of the Chargers yet again. Find that fountain of youth. How do you think Tom Brady's doing this? I don't know if he is or he isn't. Hey, by the way, speaking of Brady, did you guys happen to see the video that my buddy Blake put out this weekend on Instagram? Alex, I know you know Blake and Michelle. They live down in Cabo. They're from Point Loma, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Did you see that uh, Blake's man, Golden Tate, got a hold of Tom Brady and Brady sent a birthday video to my man Blake. Now, did not. I thought it was cool when Jim Nance sent me a birthday video, but Tom Brady sending you a birthday video, that's freaking rad, huh, dude? I guess. I guess that's okay. Yeah, you guys, you know, you guys wouldn't Tom Brady, the, you know, just the greatest football player of all time, sending you a birthday Whatever. No biggie. Yeah. Hey, um, yeah. talk to me about the Padres this weekend. Padres got started with spring training this past weekend. And forget about games. I just, the one thing I came away with out of the weekend was people started talking to the players who are, by the way, more interesting than ever before. Maybe one of the most interesting guys is Tommy Pham. His off season of getting shanked in the back in front of Pacers Strip Club downtown. Uh, Point low. I mean, yeah, but is it really Point Loma? Is it is it really like the midway? Yeah. Is that really yeah. Point Loma? Is it? It is. Anyway, sports arena, sports so, arena Point Loma. Do you remember how? <laughs> I don't want. I, yes, I do want to go back to. Do you remember how AC reported the the first thing, and how like it was just like a casual interaction where you know fan may have got stabbed, but that's you know it was just a disagreement of a parking space or whatever. No big deal. And then fam finally speaking out in public saying that I should be dead or paralyzed right now. But the fact that I'm so muscular, that's the only reason why I'm not dead or paralyzed. Yeah. Like what? Yeah. Like when him, him saying that just like blew my mind. It just goes to show you how the media is now. You know, we started today with JJ Watt and he wants to make his own announcement. I compared it to Trevor Bauer when he went to the Dodgers. He makes his own announcement on YouTube. JJ Watt does it on Twitter. They don't want to give it to the traditional media guys. So the traditional media guys have to suck up and kiss everybody's ass. And Kevin AC, instead of saying, Hey, look, um, he was in front of a strip club in a big fight. By the way, here's the video. Look at the amount of blood coming out of his back right now. And look at the length of that slice. Instead, it was like, no biggie. Cause I always have to protect them. Cause if I don't protect them, then they're not going to give me anything. They're not going to give me access. They're not going to let me talk to the players. So it's just a big suck up job by AC, but he's been doing that his whole career. That guy's made a career out of doing that, you know, to his credit. Yeah. That's why he's, why he's got a job. His, <laughs> right. All right. Stick around. Um, I want to talk about the Padres this past weekend. What Tommy fam had to say, what Manny Machado revealed this past weekend Oh, you mean the baseball Jameis Winston? I'll explain. Hold that thought. Stick around, everybody. Hey, great friends. On a Monday afternoon, along with the crew, Grande Alejandro Padilla, hermano numero uno in la casa. Ah. And with the art connoisseur, the Basquiat himself, bringing the street cred from the podcast shed, Big Brown in the house. Hey, hey, more wood paneling coming. Nice. Uh, it is no more Basquiat. Any, yeah, any more Basquiat's coming? Those are a little harder to come by. Got to mm -hmm. be honest with you. Those, those aren't just floating around. I mean, they're floating around out there, but the ones I, I like, I see are pricey. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, Gene gotta, Michael or Jean, gotta, or Jean Michel? Got to wait for my strike force money to come in. John Baptiste. I don't think it's 
Pepsi. That's a different dude. Don't you worry that's about That's the it. don't you worry about that's it. the that's the lead band member for Colbert show. Don't you listen, you I know. <laughs> Me. I got the artwork, okay? Don't don't do that. By the way, I'm letting that whole strike force thing just blow right over my head because Burt Grossman has poisoned you. And mm-hmm. uh and I want my hundred thousand. I want my hundred thousand. Yeah, I mean, the strike force is a major league operation, as you can imagine. They saying. spend a ton of money. Uh, okay, let me do this. Let me get back to the Padres before we move on, because I still would like to get to a few other things today. Anybody here watch the Golden Globes? I I didn't. Okay, but I've read the reports, and and the only reason I bring it up is because there are some <laughs> the reports. I, yeah, the reports. I read. <laughs> I didn't watch. On read the read wires. The full, the full report on the AP wire. I read the score. You know, I read the box. Score. <laughs> I read the reports. And I just want to see what everybody thinks about some of these shows. So we'll get there coming up. Um, and I still haven't talked about LeBron and this um and this uh this Laton thing mm-hmm. that happened. All right, so we'll get to we'll get to all these stories coming up. Let's start with the Padres. So Padres started spring training last week and started playing games this past weekend. I caught a little bit of the Padres on the radio. Interesting. I turned over just to hear what was going on because I was in my car. I got to say it was, I don't know, Saturday or Sunday afternoon, whichever day it was. Um, and no Ted Leitner, you know, to, to not hear Ted Leitner on a Padre radio broadcast uh, is, is, is interesting. You know, um, Jesse Agler, I don't really have like strong opinions that he's great or that he's terrible. I just kind of think of him as being a solid baseball young guy, you know? Um, so I'm not like pro Jesse, anti Jesse. I don't, I don't really care, but it's just to not hear Ted. I mean, again, it is the, the, uh, the circle of life in the world of media in a local market, you know? So anyway, Alex, get us back on track here. Tommy Pham. Yes. I found this to be very interesting. Tommy Pham is a character. You know, he's not the traditional white bread kind of Padre guy. He's got a lot of edge to him. And then when he got into it this past offseason at Pacers, and got stabbed in the back. And I mean, listen, you got to understand, this was a deep stab in and a long wound across. When Tommy Wait, do Pham, that again. Do that again. How was it? Browner, Browner, watch this right here. It's a shank move right here. It's an in, okay, and then uh, and then cut across. When Tommy Pham says that he's lucky to be alive or lucky to not be paralyzed, dude, the notion that, that his spine or his, um, I don't know, nerves or... Uh, you know, like back stuff. The fact that it didn't get severe, whatever is back there, right? so like organs and stuff. You know, Kidney. like medical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like like anatomy, all up in it. The fact that he didn't get like severely life threatening, career threatening, hurt. The fact he is, this guy should be praying every day and thanking God every day. So here's Tommy Fam, spring training. Arizona being questioned about his off season and about obviously all this stuff that took place. I do love the fact that Alex brings up that Kevin AC reported this as no big deal. He'll need a bandaid. He'll be fine. You know, but here's what Tommy Pham said. Well, this is, they asked him if he, what lessons did he learn huh? from that incident? No, nah, not really, man. I still, I still look at everything almost the same. If anything, I probably would just spend more money and stop saving as much because, you know, if I die, then I feel like I have too much money in the bank and I, I didn't live enough. I love that. <laughs> God, I <laughs> Me love too. That. So, God, so I, much. Tommy Pham is very, very quickly becoming my favorite Padre because he's edgy. You know what I mean? He's not just white bread and clean, wholesome family entertainment. He's not a Ron Fowler player. He's a Peter Seidler guy, and I like it. And I like that he is a bad boy. And I like that he's not only getting into bar fights, although I didn't love the whole situation, but I like that he's not apologetic about it. It's like, hey, man, what'd you learn from this? Nothing other than I got too much money in the bank. And you know what that means? It means I'm not living enough. So when the season's over, I need to rent a yacht and spend two weeks out on the French Riviera. And if it costs me half a million dollars, well, so be it. Because I cannot have all this money in the bank and then get shanked in front of Pacers and possibly die. Because if I die after getting shanked in front of Pacers with a few million bucks in the bank, man, I wasn't living. I like that guy. I like Tommy Pham. You know what that means now is that instead of getting in an Uber X, I'm going to jump on a private jetty 
and go to Vegas and then do strip clubs where I'm supposed to be doing strip clubs, not in the freaking Midway slash Point Loma crappy district. You hey, know what I mean? Hey, like, hey, no, come on, man. No, come on. Because it, like when you don't with, with Browner, listen to what I'm saying. If you had the money that Tommy Fam has in his bank account, what up, fam? Why would you spend any time at Pacers International Showgirls when you can jump on a jetty, a little PJ, and head to Vegas and do it the right way? Hey man, listen, let me tell y'all something. Because y'all both of y'all bogus for this, okay? The man is just trying to stimulate the local economy, okay? Tommy Fam is a is is a big baller, all right? Tommy Fam roll up in paces. That's 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 like a month's worth of rent for some of these young ladies when they're in there working, okay? So what he trying to do. Let's help a young lady through school, trying to help a young lady with her bills. Tommy Fam is doing this for the community. So don't take your community dollars to Vegas, Tommy. Take them on back over there. I guarantee you they'll take care of you this time around. Because they don't need that kind of publicity. Okay? So I think it's yeah. better for I think it's better for Tommy to not be jetting off somewhere. I think they should send a limo to pick him up. Okay. They should pay for his Uber ride. Tommy Fam's career earnings before 2021. Was nine point two million dollars career earnings? How many years? He's now uh, seven. Mm -hmm. He's now doubling that bad boy with this year's eight point nine salary. So a career eighteen million dollars. If I had eighteen million dollars, you wouldn't catch me dead on freaking Pacers. You wouldn't catch me anywhere near Pacers. Dude, if I had eighteen million dollars in the Dude, bank, got, if I had nine million dollars in the bank, you wouldn't catch me at Pacers. Let me explain something to you. If I had eighteen dollars in the bank, okay, I'm not going to Pacers. Oh. I've been there. I've done that. Strip, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, strip. I would, I would go. be tempted to go with Browner, which that'd be that oh, sounds. Oh fun. no, listen, don't get me wrong. I, you're, you're, I'm with you. It actually does sound fun. Like going with Browner <laughs> to Pacers does sound fun until I think to myself two things. One, how many bathroom fights Browner seems to get into in uh, bars, which he has he does know about. a lot about random fights. Yeah, That's true. You know, that, and I can't how, argue against that. Yeah, and how he thought that everything that happened to Tommy Pham in the parking lot was kind of just a normal run of the mill Tuesday night in yeah. front of Pacers, you know? So like, it was. I just feel like I feel like going with Browner to Pacers is asking for trouble. In fact, Browner, look, I'd prefer you not. Look, man, this is all I will say. Okay. Alex, if you had $18 million, you know what? You probably should frequent a place like Pacers. Because if you go to one of these high level places, you know what they're gonna do? They're just gonna treat you like another high level dude, baby. You go up and pace, they're gonna treat you like a god, okay? You want your <laughs> feet you rubbed? Got five, you want your ones? Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, Matt, no, 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 no. If you got tens instead of ones, woo, baby, you might be able to walk out with a couple, okay? So just, right. just let's not judge paces so quickly, okay? Paces is a fine establishment in a wonderful, beautiful city that sometimes things get out of hand. And that's okay, because when you popping. You get all types of creatures and critters that come to your place. You don't see none of these other places having those problems. You know why? Because Tommy Fam ain't going there because he ain't heard about them. You know what he heard about? Paces. You know, this past weekend when I was telling you I was playing golf with my buddy Jim and he brought his buddy Kenny. Kenny's like, Kaplan, I listen to you guys every day on the radio. Your boy Browner's out of his mind. I'm like, yeah, hilarious, right? He's like, yeah, hilarious and out of his mind. I don't know. Wrong. A lot. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, listen, let me keep going because I do want to cover a lot shout of out, stuff. Shout out, Kenny. Shout out, Kenny. Yeah. 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 Hey, um, I do want to say that I got a, um, I got a lot more I still want to get to. So I, as we're working our way through some of this Padre stuff, Alex, play for everybody yeah. Danny Machado because as we talk about okay. Tommy Pham, and I love this comment. I love this comment. I, what did I me learn? Too. Not nothing. How's my life different? It's not. The only thing is, bottom line, I need to spend more money. Because I can't be saving all. I don't want to die with all this money in the bank. Okay, he must not have kids. Um. All right, play for me, that's Manny why, Machado. Why needed, that's why he need to go to Pacers, make some. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I called Manny Machado the baseball version of Jameis Winston. What I meant by that is, if you guys remember Jameis Winston, the first member of the Thirty Thirty Club, mm -hmm. and that face right there. Yeah, he was a. Uh, he was blind as hell, and he was still playing quarterback in the NFL. I don't know if Manny Machado was blind as hell. But he said he had some vision issues, and this summer he got a LASIK eye surgery or laser eye surgery. So he talked about uh, I mean, I hope it helps me hit better. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's just uh, I was dealing with some stuff last year with, uh, with the lights, just lights, night, night games. So, um, you know, I still have the same vision. Um, we'll just see when the lights turn on in San Diego. Um, you know, if I could uh, 
you know, make that little adjustment there and if it helped me out or not. But, um, you know, vision's fine. It was same thing. It was nothing major, nothing, nothing different. But, I mean, hopefully it helps me see the ball a little better. I can hit 320, 330. Okay, let me tell you something. Remember when James Harden first showed up to play for Houston this year and everybody talked about how fat he was, right? Mm -hmm. suit. When I look at Manny, when I look at Manny Machado, <laughs> dude, he looks so big. And I don't mean fat. He just looks huge, like pumped up. Like, I, I don't know, man. Maybe it's just me. Well, you remember his quote last year? I guess last when he showed up to spring, he said he's swole as hell. And he just was like, I just had the best career. I just had the best year statistically I've ever had, even though it was a shortened season. So he actually said in that press conference, like, I just did the same thing. Swole as hell. Dude, he looks freaking huge, man. I mean, seriously, he looks <laughs> he looks Conseco gigantic. You know what I mean? And he's got whoa, 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 whoa. what are you doing? No, no. <laughs> Listen, you'll have to excuse me. The the Conseco Miami thing, it just cracks me up. Like he just there's a sound that all the Miami guys, A-Rod, Conseco. Oh, what are you doing? What? Come on, man. Come oh, on, man. What? Say he prints fielder big. Oh, that that he's not that big. No, I'm just saying. Just when you say the term, when you say you know, that when you crew, talk about bro. big, that crew. When you talk about that crew, you're insinuating, maybe without insinuating, that the boys on the juice. Well, look, um, oh, just because you're saying, oh. just because you're saying that somebody's really looking big and pumped up, um, and you're comparing them to somebody else who was big, pumped up, and juiced, doesn't automatically mean that you're juiced. But I mean, what do do people not in baseball? Does everybody just now think that nobody in baseball uses the sauce anymore? No one on our team. No, not yeah. one. Not one yeah. person. I know, and that's the way it used to be too. With, with and by the way, I could care less. I'm not making an accusation, and I'm not going to even like go down this rabbit hole. But you know, it, it's when you have a player that you love on your team, you don't believe it, or you just don't want to. You know, ask a ask a Giants fan. You know, Barry Bonds? No, he's fine. You know, ask, Never ask a Padre. Stuff. Ask ask a Padre <laughs> fan. Uh, Ken Caminiti? No, no problem. You know, um, what I'm saying is, bottom line, Manny looks huge. He, does. he looks gigantic. He looks yoked, swole, arms are gigantic, shoulders are gigantic. I mean, he just looks like a beast. And now he got laser he vision. So look out. Yeah. yeah, I hope he's got the I hope he has the best season of his career. I do. All right, let me go to Machado was also an advocate of uh let them play California Browner. So I don't know. You're not on the same side on that one. Listen, you can't he, he gotta be wrong at some point. He wrong mm. about this. Shout yeah. out to my boy Nathan Fletcher. Keep doing your thing, player. <laughs> All right, let me hear from Will Myers. Let me hear what Will Myers had to say. Uh, because again, if you're, I guess the only person we're not really hearing from is Ted Tease, but, but you know, you're, you're, you're hearing from what you might heard from last week. He's yeah, counting his I money. Guess, yeah. Contract. Yeah. All right. Here, here's what, well, he's counting, he's counting the years until he gets his money, by the way. Right. True. You know? True. Uh, let's, Fam's making more than him. Yeah. Let's hear, uh, let's hear what Will Myers had to say. I, I think for me, it's, it's, it's definitely different this spring training with, uh, with the expectations, you know, it's not more, it's not hopeful this year. It's, it's more of a matter of a fact that we are good, um, uh, which is a good thing. Um, so it's, uh, that, that's very exciting. It's, uh, it's one of those things that this is the type of team that AJ came to put together and, uh, you know, it's, it should be very exciting. He cracks me up. He, this kid cracks me up, Will Myers. Cause even as he's getting older, he's not like, like growing up a little bit, you know, he's still a slob, you know, like this yeah. dude is, I just had a, it's so funny. He's, he's wearing his hat on backwards, which he loves to do like in public appearances, which is whatever, that's his deal. He's wearing like a, a Bill Belichick Padres hoodie, but he's not wearing the Brown and yellow. He's wearing like the previous blue and gray. And he's got the, the sleeves cut off at the elbow. And Will Myers looks like pig pen. From uh, from Charlie Brown, you know, he just looks like, I mean, he just looks funny. Cracks me up. I just had a realization that Colin Cowherd absolutely would hate the Padres if he followed baseball. A lot of because backwards hat Machado, guy. backwards hat. Myers, backwards hat. Mm. This is not a championship caliber team because they wear backwards hats. Really? Is that how you determine? I think so. I think so. So, so I guess if the if the Padres move to L.A. and allow Colin Cowherd in their war room, then he'll just start sucking up to them. Is that right? And yeah, he'll be all about the backwards hats, right. you know. Until then, that's that's no, no, that's yeah, a I'm no. 
All right. Hey, let me, uh, let me just say that um, I want to move over now and because I know Browner wants to talk about this. I want to talk about this, this notion that LeBron should shut up and play basketball and not talk about other stuff because Alex soccer guy Zlatan mm -hmm. told LeBron, just shut up and play ball, dude. What are you doing? Yeah. And, uh, and it yeah. infuriates uh, one particular group of people and like one particular group of people are like very offended by this, you know? So I want to talk about that coming up in just one second. Hey, uh, I want to make a quick mention. Who have I talked about? I've talked about Corky today. I've talked about Gary today. I've talked about mountain. I've talked about uh, total T today. Um, I will talk about Tory holistics more because the highlight of the day is right around the corner. Okay. What do you think? When a, when an international soccer star who had a short period of time playing in LA tells a guy like LeBron in a media interview, somebody's asking him, what do you think about LeBron James talking politics? And he says, bad idea. She just shut up and play basketball, man. People get pissed. How dare he? And then LeBron starts coming out. Hey, don't come at me. I know what I'm talking about and all the work that I do and the kids that I have in school. And I see what goes on in the real world here. I am going to use my platform. Browner. What'd you think about what Zlatan had to say? Should I play Zlatan oh, first? Yeah, please play. Cause, cause what I, I just want to say what I find super interesting is when you're a star and you have an opinion, you don't have to just like suck up like everybody else does. It's just your opinion whether you like it or you don't like it. And it's interesting how an international player has a perception of an American player and what happens in America. Go ahead and play. He's a phenomenal in what he's doing. But I don't like when people, when they have a, they, some kind of status and they go in and they do politics at the same time what they're doing. I mean, do what you're good at. Do the category you do. I play football because I'm the best in playing football. I don't do politics. If I would be a political politician, I would do politics. That is the big first mistake people do when they become famous and they come in a certain st uh, status. Stay out of it. They just do what you're best at because it doesn't look good. Hmm. All right. Again, I, what I find interesting is that you're an international soccer star. You've got millions and millions of dollars and you don't care. You have an opinion. And this is what yours is. And people are pissed. Look, uh, slat time for Vama bitch or whatever your name is, bro. Just call me bitch. Shut your mouth, homie. Shut your <laughs> mouth, bro. This ain't this ain't got nothing to do with you. All right. You you done left and kicked your ball somewhere else. Stay stay your ass over there. Okay. You ain't got nothing to do with this. When you was over here, you done had this to say when you was in LA. When LeBron could have pulled up on you. You was all LeBron. You, I, if I remember correctly, you was wearing a Laker jersey, bro. Now you all, y'all know me. I'm not Mr. LeBron. I'm not Mr. Laker. But I ain't gonna stand for this. Not ever. Not not will I. Because if I remember correctly, and LeBron said at his press conference, when when Salamovich had a problem in his country, he spoke up. He spoke up how he felt like an outsider, or how he felt like he's being ostracized in his country because of his last name, Vavimovich, or whatever it is. So. If that's how you feel, bro, you speak on your country, let LeBron speak on his. You shut your mouth about LeBron off the court, because like I've said a million times, off the court, LeBron James is one of the best athletes we've had in this country since Muhammad Ali. Yes, better than Michael Jordan, because LeBron puts the work in in the community. Michael Jordan does not necessarily. So when it comes to LeBron off the court, shut your mouth, I'm a nama, Mitch. I ain't having it from you, bro. I ain't having it. Mm-hmm. What do you think, Alex? You're a big soccer fan. Zlatan, didn't he play for your L.A. team? He played for my Man U team. Oh. He played for Manchester United as well. I don't have an MLS team. But, I mean, dude, this is for reference point, this is a guy that calls himself a god. Just This is who we're dealing with here. He calls himself the best soccer player of all time. He's not. He calls himself a god. Refers, refers to himself as a lion. I guess it's no better than referring to himself as king. But... Like just for reference, the ego on this man is on levels that you've never seen before. You don't talk about self-centered. Look at me. Look at me. Zlatan is your guy. He's like on his twelfth team. He's so good at soccer, but he's so <laughs> unbearable that he's on his like twelfth or thirteenth team. He like retired from Sweden because nobody liked him, and then he went back because they needed him. 
But yeah, it's just just like for reference, that's who you're dealing with right now. Yeah, I think, listen, I think for me, I can tell you this, middle-aged white guy over here, I love that LeBron talks. I love it. I hated the fact that Michael didn't. So I got to say I'm with LeBron on this one. And I like to hear that that Browner is with LeBron. Hmm. I got your back, right. Bron. Nice. All right, coming up, we'll get to the highlight of the day, man, which I'm pretty excited to see what's going on. And haven't really talked about the uh, Golden Globes, which were really not on my radar, but I know a lot of you guys watch these shows that were big winners, so I'd like to get in on that. Stick around. All right, great friends. On a Monday afternoon, wrapping things up. Browner, it's funny you say that about uh, about Michael Che not being funny, you know, because um, when he said it, the crowd did not react like, ooh, that was a really, really funny joke. They reacted like, ooh, that's super off color. Ain't going to get and, you in trouble. And it had to be Che who delivered it because if Jost delivers it, it doesn't even come close to working. I think you can have Dave Chappelle say something like that on SNL because he's not a regular there. And he's and he basically can say whatever he wants. But Michael Che, is a, he's good for that show, man. I would hate to see him kind of go through something because that – because a joke like that didn't land like it that joke's just not funny no it's he gets not. to hide he, michael che and lauren michaels get to hide behind its comedy and if you find it funny great and if you don't you don't um whereas how about this dude from the bachelor you talk about the cancel culture what's that guy's name chris something or other? chris harrison, chris harrison. Yeah. That, guy, that guy was a nobody he got the job with the bachelor he got huge like anybody could have done that job. Seriously, anybody, <laughs> anybody could have done that job. And he got so famous and so rich and then got into like, I don't know if you guys ever saw it or not. I actually watched it. Got into a thing with a, with a girl who used to be on The Bachelor who's like working for entertainment tonight and he was defending, I, I don't even know, something racial, blah, blah, blah. He so this defending- is what happened. I, okay, go ahead. I can tell you what happened. Black Bachelor this season, okay? There was a girl who is still a contestant on the show was at a party with a Confederate flag. Right, I, right. That's where all this started. But dude, I just had this. I had a long conversation about Chris Harrison with a buddy who watches the show because his fiance makes him watch the show, and it just blew my. I, when I read this story, I was like, "Oh, so that guy's definitely dating that girl for sure." Oh, she's got to be and the winner. It, she's got to be. And then I come, and I come out to find out, just a contestant. Like he has a girlfriend. He he's happily. I was like, "Why would you? Why? First of all." Don't mess up that that gig, bro. Like you got the easiest gig in the world, and you're gonna start saying you're gonna why even why even defend it if you're not like that's not your girl, that's not your family member. Like you're just defending a random ass contestant that used to be on the show. Not even, like why would you risk the pay for? Oh, I made no sense no, to me. So no, it was so dumb. It really was. All right, listen, let's rock out of here on a Monday. Hey guys, did you guys notice anything different about my setup today at all? I did. What you- First thing I did. was, what do you know? Your camera's like way higher, way higher, right? Let me the show you TVs guys. Have a, the TVs all have a little square on the bottom right hand corner. I don't know why. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that too. But let me show you guys what I got this weekend. Check this out. Check this out. Because I sit on my ass all day long. Watch us. Oh. God. And up desk. Ta da. <laughs> I can stand. That's pretty. Actually, that sounds nice, dude. Dude, let me tell you. Not only did I get the stand-up, you know what I got. Let me tell you. Let me let me see what we got. I got a back massager. Yeah. Because I'm sitting all freaking day. Yeah. I get stiff. Yeah. So instead, I don't. I don't have the ability to buy a stand-up desk. I got this massager. Let me show you what else. Let me show you what else I got. Look how old we are, Browner. <laughs> Look at this. This is something you stand on when you. Oh yeah, dude. Like you're like a cashier or something. Yeah. Dude, my th- Rachel got this for me for my birthday. And she's like, I know you're complaining that you're st- that you're sitting all day long. So now I can stand, I can stretch, I can. St- oh, dude, this stand up desk is freaking bomb AF, dude. Dude, you should get look at, you can see, you see the heat pads going. Oh man, dude, this sitting shit is for the birds, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, birds fly though. Was it an extension to the desk? Was it a, a whole new desk? No, no, it's it, it literally comes, and you have to just you put a few pieces together. And mm-hmm. you just, and you sit on top of the desk and it just lifts right up. You got to send me that link, dude, because that's great. Okay. I saw it at this right. house. He was very excited about it. Oh, I got very. your two, I got your tutorial holistics cards. I got to bring them to you. All right, promo code Kiba. Yeah, promo code is Kiba. All right, listen, let's rock out of here. Peace, everybody.